Um, I know my, uh, I make a living touting books, but I'm really touting this one. I've read this book. It is, it is excellent. I, I very, very strongly uh, suggest that you buy this book and have it signed, and I'll be hand-selling it through Christmas because uh, King Dork is, is, is really uh, quite an accomplishment, and we are very proud to introduce Frank Portman. Thanks for coming. Uh, let me get set up here. So I'm thinking that I'll just, you know, read and then play and then read and then play and then see where we are. Um, first thing we Can you hear what I'm saying while I'm playing this? Yeah. Um, does something need to be louder or quieter? What? The guitar is too loud. <laughs> when I start screaming, it might make it. <laughs> All right. So this is my book. Um, you want to read this part about where the um, guys in the book are, are, have a band, more or less, uh, get their uh, instruments for the first time. Um, so the, the, the Tom Henderson is the narrator, and his friend Sam Hellerman just got his mail order bass. I had to admit it was sweet. It almost looked like a copy of a Fender Jazz bass, but it was made in Korea, and the fine craftsmen in the Korean bass sweatshop could put their own collective individual stamp on it. And by that I mean the name on the oddly rectangular headstock was not Fender Jazz bass, but rather Apex Dominator II. He didn't have an amp yet, but we figured out how to plug it into the back of the Magnavox stereo console in my living room so the sound would come out of the speakers. It sounded kind of distant and rumbly and fuzzy, but sort of cool, too. Famous recording engineers and producers spend millions of dollars experimenting with effects and overloading preamps and poking holes in speakers with pencils and even pouring foreign substances over circuitry to achieve the same sort of thing Sam Hellerman could accomplish just by being too cheap to buy an amp. We are geniuses. He looked cool with it, too. He had it slung so low around his neck that it hung well below his knees. And in order to reach the G-string, he had to kind of dislocate his right shoulder a little bit. He appeared to be in considerable pain. Like I said, way cool. We had just finished working on the band's signature tune, Losers Like You, which goes... Um, <laughs> it's, I'm going to play this part, because... I don't know. I was because I was I was thinking I was gonna on the way here I was gonna read that part and I thought I've never actually played it before but I kind of know how it goes. <laughs> this is the song "Losers Like You," just the chorus that is is quoted in there. Capturing the rise, we're losers. The band is called The Sadly Mistaken, Mo Vittles on guitar, Sam Noxious Fumes on bass and landscaping, band names spelled out in bullet holes on the side of a family station wagon, first album, Kill the Boy Wonder. <laughs> it sounded a lot better with bass instead of clarinet, I'll tell you that right now. We were playing the next tune when Little Big Tom popped in, that's his stepfather. Nice, he said, Lou Reed, right? Sweet Jane. No, Sam Hellerman said, my baby who art in heaven, an original. Little Big Tom tilted his head in that bird-like way he has and said, hmm, I thought it might have been Lou Reed. Then he tilted his whole body from one slight angle to the other by raising first the left foot, then the right, but keeping the rest of his body stiff, and suck his lower lip out slightly while bringing his chin firmly downward, as though to say, I have just performed this little dance to celebrate the fact that I believe we've accomplished a great deal with this illuminating discussion. <laughs> then he said, rock on, and flitted out. 
Sam Hellerman and I looked at each other for a little while with the same thought, though he was the one who said it first. You know, my baby who art in heaven does sound an awful lot like Sweet Jane. <laughs> Fuck, I said. So that, that's my first <laughs> I forgot it had bad, a bad word in there. Um, anyway. <laughs> Sorry about that, kids. Um, okay, I'm going to read another part now. And then I'll play another song, and then we'll kind of see what I'm really interested in. Um, this is the part, um, it's, it's probably the, the thing that I have read um, from this book that gets the biggest laughs. So when I'm feeling nervous, I always return to it. So anyone who's ever seen me read before has heard me do it probably before. Um, I'll try to make it special. <laughs> <laughs> So he's talking about his French class. Now, I had started taking French in seventh grade, so this was my fourth year, and even I find it, even I found it shocking to think how little French I actually knew after three plus years. True. I knew quite a lot about Jean and Claude, how they go to the movies and eat beefsteak and fruit. And I could tell you all about their other fabulous adventures, though only in the present tense. I was a master of the present tense in French. I guess that is pretty advanced when you think about it. I felt a little sorry for the French teacher, Madame Jimenez McAnally, not only because students would often mispronounce her name so it sounded kind of nasty, but also because it must have been hard knowing deep down that whatever activities may have been going on in that class, the teaching and learning of the French language was not among them. Someone had hit on the idea of asking her to explain the complicated 24-hour French system of telling time at the beginning of each class just to see how long she would go along with it before cracking. She was determined not to crack, though. She explained the 24-hour system every single day. Whether that was giving in or fighting back is hard to say. You could look at it either way. The last 15 minutes of advanced French is called advanced conversation, where the students pair up for advanced stimulating dialogue. Yasmin Schmick approached me and said, as near as I could make out, Le nez est bête. The nose is a beast? A little puzzling. Then she switched to English. Rene is stupid, she said. You're actually a pretty nice guy. Pause. Really? I had to assume she was talking about Nene Taliaferro. What the hell had they been saying about me? Madame J.M. frowned at us. We weren't supposed to speak English in advanced conversation, so we continued in French. What time is it, I asked. It is 11.05, she replied. Thank you very much, I said. What a shame. If it pleases you, what do you call yourself? I am sorry, said Yasmin Schmidt. I am hungry. The young girls wear a very pretty dress. They eat and play soccer with the mother and the fathers. My name is Yasmin. I am four years old. Ah, yes, I said. The young people love to buy discs of pop music for dancing and for holiday making. I chose my words carefully. They, my God, they eat beverages. It is true. My two friends, Jean and Claude, go to the cinema yesterday to view films. What a surprise. They eat. They are flowers. Yasmin Schmick nodded. Thank you very much. I am sorry. <laughs>